friends! Welcome to our Creativity Club. I'm Meredith and I do product development as well as videos like this for Faber-Castell USA Creativity for Kids. Just a few notes about our class today. I can't hear or see you, so if you do have a question, go ahead and put it in the question box or hit the little question mark at the bottom of the screen. Occasionally, I will ask you for your opinion on things. So you can always answer in the vote here box. This will be recorded, so if you miss a part, no worries. You can come back and catch it later. So today, we will be doing our butterfly fairy door. Can't wait to create with you. Bye. Hello, friends. Today, we're looking at our butterfly fairy door. So here's our example of what mine looks like already painted. I can't wait for you guys to create with me. Let's look at what's inside. Okay. Wow, there's so much. Okay, here we are. We have our handy dandy instructions. We'll put those to the side for a second. We have our wonderful wooden fairy door with the open and close latch. Ooh, uh, ready to paint. Our rock. Two paint brushes, a broad tip brush for larger areas and a fine tip brush for making cute little details. Ooh, some green gravel. We'll see what that's for. A oh, pretty little white flower. Some wonderfully brilliant paint. Our weatherproof glue. Ooh, and then what's in here? It looks like we have some more decoration. These cute little mushrooms. Here we are. Ooh, fun designs to put on our door. Butterfly. A fabric sparkle butterfly. Our little tattoo or our little decal that we'll be putting on our rock. And a fun little mirror that will go inside our fairy door. Oh, and this. Oh, and if you'd like to share your craft, you can ask an adult to go on hashtag creativity for kids on Instagram or use our Facebook page as well. So we'll put that up there. Okay, let's start. So what's it say in our instructions here? Cover your work surface, have a cup of water and paper towels handy. Wear a smock or old clothes. This paint may stain clothing or fabric. Clean up any spills immediately. Um, the paint can settle and separate over time, so mix each color before you begin painting. And always rinse your brush in between colors so it doesn't mix together. All right, so let's clear our space and prepare it for crafting. We'll put everything that we're not using up here, or not using yet, I should say. Okay, and this is a little insert that comes inside the box. So it's actually a perfect surface to paint on um, so you don't get your table all painty. Okay, and all the things we're going to paint, I'll keep close by. Here we go. All right. So, decide on a design for your door. You can look at the box or come up with your own ideas. Start by sliding the front door up and off of the hinges. This will make it easier to paint. An important note, leave the inside of the door frame unpainted to prevent the door from sticking. All right, let's go. So we'll take our door off of the hinges 
And as it said in the instructions, we don't want to paint the edge of the door or inside of this door so it doesn't get stuck. But we do want to choose what color we want to use first. So let's make the outside of the door green. And maybe we make the inside of the door this really fun orangey color. Okay, so since we're going to be covering a large area, we will use our broad brush. And like it said in the instructions, if there's a little bit of fluid on top of the paint, it's normal. It's because the paint settles. So you can always just use the back of your brush and mix it up, or the tip of your brush and mix it up. And we'll use the tip of our brush like that and mix it up. And then we can start painting, just like this. And this paint is special paint. It's like acrylic, but there's a special little ingredient in it. So it can be outside and the paint won't run if it gets rained on or snowed on. So you don't have to worry about that. And just cover it all up. This wood absorbs the paint really nicely, so it shouldn't take that long to dry. Okay, here we go. And we'll go ahead and set that aside so it can dry. And then we'll move on to our outside of our door, which I think we said we were going to make orange. So, Close that up, rinse out our brush, here's our water, we'll rinse out our brush, dry it, now we'll get some wonderful orange on here, and this is not just regular orange, it's kind of a peachy orange, it's very springtimey, it's very pretty, and we'll paint that on, and Again, it just absorbs right into this wood so easily. It covers very, very nicely. And you'll notice as you're painting, this door has really cool lifelike grooves in it. So it looks like slats of wood all put together to create this door. So it's a very well made fairy door. There we go. Get it all in there. Then when we're done with this, I'm going to show you a fun technique to make it look like our door is a little bit weathered. And you don't have to do this, but I think it's fun and it might be interesting for you to use on your fairy door or on any other little painting project that you might want to do. So, and I'm going to go ahead and paint these little crossbars orange too. So you want to be sure not to forget the bottom side or the top side of the little bars. And you can be quick with this because you don't have to be super exact with it. So just covering up all the wood with your paint using your broad tip brush makes it go very quickly so then you can move on and put in your awesome details of what you might find in your fairy door so speaking of what we might find in our fairy door i imagine a fairy of course um, uses this door. So, I'm wondering um, if you guys would mind helping me name the fairy whose door this is. So on the screen you'll see a little box pop up so you can vote as to which fairy lives in this door. 
So our options include berry flora or berry sparkle tastic or berry valerie. So go ahead and vote. Who do you think which fairy lives here? Is it Flora, Sparkle Tastic, or Valerie? And I'll give you guys a few seconds to vote. And we'll put this guy aside to dry. Okay, I'll close her up here. And you know that you've closed your paint all the way when you hear a little click. So we still have to paint the outside of our fairy door. And then we get to paint what's going on inside our fairy door. So oftentimes you'll see maybe like a scene as to what a fairy house might look like. Or let's look on the box. In this one it looks like this fairy door leads to a magical garden with flowers and butterflies. That's really fun. Let's see if there's any other examples. Oh yeah, here's the interior of what the fairy house might look like. So, okay, let's go back to our um, voting. It looks like fairy sparkle-tastic lives here. All right, so thank you for voting. Now we know who we're painting, um, whose fairy door we're painting. So Sparkle Tastic, the very, very shiny, shimmery fairy, um, lives here. Great. That's really fun. I don't know if um, if you've ever met a Sparkle Tastic fairy, but I can just imagine. She's got a great personality. It's really fun to hang out with. And um, leaves glitter everywhere she goes. At least that's what I imagine. All right, here's one side. And again, like this paint dries so quickly, I can put my hand over it and it's already sucked into the wood. So it dries very, very nice and quickly. Now, I just kind of did this quickly, but I'll show you. I'm holding on to this little um, latch on the back, which I'll explain what that's for later, but it's really helpful to hold on to while you're painting the side. There we go. And while we're painting, let's think. What do we want to paint inside? Now, in the instructions, I know we give some examples of using patterns. Like if you wanted your inside to look like the interior of a fairy house, they might have wallpaper on the inside. So you'd paint the first layer down one color, and then you might use your fine tip brush and add some patterns to it. But I think for ours, I, I would love to make it look like this door leads into a magical fairy land. So I'm going to make it look like a blue sky, but I want it to be kind of like a faded blue sky. So it starts out a little bit light and then it goes darker. So how we can achieve that is it's a very simple technique and it's creating a gradient. So the easiest way to explain is to show you. So I'll take some white and I'll just put a blob of it right over here on our work surface. And then I'll take whatever other color we're using. We're using the blue. And then you just add the blue into the white. So whenever you're mixing colors, it's usually best to add the darker color into the lighter color. And that way you can keep adding um, the darker color in without adding too much of the darker color. So you can go a little bit by little bit. Okay, so we have a light blue now. 
and I'll show you the difference between our light blue and our dark blue. All right, so working quickly, we add some light blue at the top of our inside of our fairy door. And you can go down as far as you want, just like that. All right, now we're going to grab a little bit more blue because we want this to be a little bit darker. So we're going to start right where we left off and we're going to make this area right here a medium blue. So we've just created something of a medium blue. And you can kind of brush it up into the light blue and that's what creates this gradient. So a gradient is basically like when a couple colors come together and they kind of blend into each other. That's an easy way to explain it. All right, so now we have our, our light color, our medium color, and now we'll add our straight blue to make our darkest blue. So we'll get rid of that light color off of our brush and add our dark blue. Oh, what a wonderful gradient this turned out to be. It's very magical looking already. Can you imagine opening up a door that leads to a beautiful sky setting? That would be really pretty, I think. So what else is in the sky? What else is in this magical land? I think we need some clouds. Maybe the clouds are shaped like hearts. Oh, that would be super cute. Okay, so here's our light color. It blends into our medium color and then into our dark color. So that's our gradient. All right, we'll wash that out. Now, since we'll be doing a little bit more fine detail work, I'm going to switch over to my fine tip brush. Here we go. All right, so we're going to make a heart-shaped cloud. So how I would create a heart-shaped cloud is by creating a heart first. Is that white? Like that. And then kind of just adding a little bit more fluffiness. You know, like moving your hand around a little bit, making it a little wiggly. Because clouds, they don't have very sharp edges, you know. They kind of just get blown around in the wind. So parts of it might look a little bit more wiggly than other parts. And just dried off my brush a little. I'm just going to kind of pull it to the side a little. Like that. Maybe up here a little bit too. So we're kind of making it a little more abstract because of that wind. Ooh, wind taking part of it away. So that's our heart shaped cloud. And how about if we add another little cloud up here? Hello, friend. Cloud friends. Cute. And down here, another little cloud friend. And again, to create these clouds, I'm just kind of touching the tip of the brush and wiggling my hand around until it looks something like a cloud. So your cloud can look like whatever you want it to look like. It's your magical fairy world. So you can do whatever you want. So here's my clouds. Okay. And what else should we have in our magical band? In the example here, it showed some flowers and some butterflies. So I think I'd like to do that too. So we need some stems for our flowers. Begin with our fine tip brush. And we'll just make these really tall flowers. And the very tall flowers that I know of are sunflowers. They get so tall sometimes that their heads just bend right over because their heads get a little bit heavy or they're 
super long stems. So these are going right up into the clouds. Just like that. And you can make them as thick or as thin as you want. Just like that. You can make them wiggly too. You could like make them kind of bend a little bit if you want. And then we want to add a couple leaves because leaves are important for flowers. There you go. They collect the sunlight and help the flowers grow. Just like that. Down here too. Now I'm going to put some grass down here so you can see how tall these flowers are compared to the blades of grass. Little blades of grass equals super giant tall stems for our sunflowers. There we go. Adorable. Now I'll hold it up so you can see a little bit easier. Cute. All right, now sunflowers, there's a lot of different varieties of sunflowers, but the sunflower variety that I'm going to paint will have an orange center with yellow petals. So I'll start with our yellow petals. And some sunflowers, they have broad leaf petals, which means they're a little bit wider, and then some have petals that are a lot thinner. So we'll just see what happens. I'm going to let the paintbrush do the, the deciding and we'll see what my paintbrush decides to paint. Looks like a little bit of both. A little bit wider and a little bit narrower. So there's lots of different petals in here. Ooh. You know what? I think, I think it needs to be a little bit bigger because some flowers just are kind of huge. And I believe our friendly pollinators like our bees and our butterflies love to visit sunflowers. It's a very large landing place for them to take a break, um, maybe get a bite to eat or something to drink. You know, that's what our little friends do out in nature. And there's one. Wow, that's a big one. And then maybe I'll make the other ones a little bit smaller. But there we go. And you can be as detailed as you want with your flowers. So you might want to maybe mix two colors. Maybe you want to mix the orange and the yellow and see what color that creates and maybe make some petals with that new color. And that's what's so fun about painting, is you can explore creating new colors and new um, depth with your brush strokes. And it's all up to you. You're the artist and you get to create whatever you want. Now this is super cute. Alright, so the idea with these fairy doors is to kind of put them out in nature. Um, or at least you can if you want. You can put them out in nature and then like if you put it close to like a sidewalk um, someone can come around and open up the door and then they'd see this and they would be so surprised in a very happy way I would say. Okay so we have our petals. Now let's go ahead and put the centers of our sunflowers in and I said I was going to use the orange so we'll close up the yellow and I like to close up each paint when I'm not using it, just in case my hand slips and the paint falls over, it won't fall out of the tray. So I like, I like putting, I like um, closing up my paint. Yay! So this is a nice big center of our sunflower. And in the sun, in the center of sunflowers, um. If you were to look in real life, you would see little seeds, and those are sunflower seeds. So then you could plant those again and 
and make new sunflowers. Yay! Alright, here's our sunflower garden with our beautiful heart-shaped cloud and his uh, or her friends, the other clouds. Okay, so we've got the inside of our door painted. Let's go back to the outside of our door for Sparkletastic, our, our fun fairy friend. All right, and I told you I was gonna show you a fun little technique to make this door look a little weathered. So, what we're gonna do is just grab a little bit of paint. I think I'll use yellow. Um, you're just gonna get a little bit of paint on the tip of your brush. And kind of dry it up a little like this. And this is actually called dry brushing. So you have just a little bit of paint on your brush and it doesn't come off like completely solid. It kind of comes off in lines from the bristles of your brush. So it just gives a hint of color. So you can still see the orange underneath but then you just see a little bit of the yellow over top. And it's, um, you might need to practice a little bit, but once you get the hang of it, it, it makes your paintings look very interesting because of this different technique. You can kind of just blend it up here. So we have a weathered peach orange door. And you don't have to paint every slat. You can just paint wherever you want. And also what's nice about doing this is that the paint is mostly staying on the slats of the board that are more raised than the indentations. So it makes it look even more authentic like wood. All right. Just finishing up down here. And lighter and darker colors are okay. We want that variation. Like I said, it creates a nice little bit of interest. There we go. And whoop, that was a lot. <laughs> we'll spread that out a little bit. So if you do put a little too much on, you can always kind of just wipe it away and go back in with your brush and kind of soften it up a little bit. So here we go. Here's our weathered peach door. Now, although we don't want to paint the inside area of the door like this, we can paint this side. So I'm going to quickly put on a nice little layer of yellow. And then we're going to move on to painting the decorations that go on the outside of our door. So, while I paint this, I would like your vote as to what color we should paint our butterfly. Should it be yellow, green, or orange? So you should see a little box pop up on your screen. And you can vote what color we should paint our butterfly. And keep in mind what color our door is. So we want our butterfly not really to blend into our door. So I don't know if that helps with your decision making or not. All right, does everyone have their votes in? We said yellow, green, or orange. And it looks like green has won. All right, we will be painting our butterfly green. Okay, so we'll put this guy aside and paint our butterfly green. 
Now, as you may have noticed, I like doing some blending and different techniques. So I'm going to do the same for our butterfly. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow in the center. Like this. And don't worry, all of you people, all you kiddos, all my friends, who voted for green, it will be green, but we're just doing a little um, zhuzhin of our butterfly to make it look interesting. Closing out that, and now here's our green. So the paint is still a little bit wet, so we're going to get a little bit of green on the tip of our brush, and kind of starting from the outside of the wings, working our way towards the middle where the yellow is, we're going to just overlap it a little bit, which will create another kind of gradient. So you can see the yellow and the green kind of blend together, which is exactly what we're looking to do. And you don't need that much paint on your paintbrush because this butterfly has um, these decorative holes in it. So um, you're not really painting all that much. Ta-da! Here's our beautiful butterfly. Wonderful. OK. So we'll just flip it over and see what that will look like. Oh yeah, that will stand out just perfect. Look at that. Wonderful. Okay, now we need to paint the decorative area, which will go at the top of our door. And I think that would look really pretty. Um, also green, so I'll paint that green too. It will match our butterfly. And again, it doesn't take that much paint because there's so many little um, decorative cuts to this piece. Now you can do as much or as little as you'd like for your um, the front of your door. I've seen samples like this one where there's a lot of detail around the edge. It looks like a vine and some flowers. Um, so you can add whatever you'd like. Maybe you know like an address of the fairy that you'd like to put on there. Maybe you could like just write that in there. Um, it's up to you. So you have total control over what you think your fairy's door should look like. And while we're painting, let's look at these little guys. These are um, sweet, cute little mushrooms. Now, in the instructions, it tells you that you can actually cut off one of the stems of the mushroom um, and then glue it onto the door handle so it looks like it's a mushroom door handle. It's really cute. So let's go ahead and paint our mushrooms while everything else is drying. And I think I'll do two yellow mushrooms and one orange mushroom. And these are styrofoam, so um, they also will be a-okay in the weather. So like I said, you can use one if you want for the door handle of your fairy door. And then the other two, um, you could probably stick in the ground near your fairy door where if you're putting it outside and if it's soft enough um, to put it outside in the ground. So you might want to keep these little sticks on them. Or you might figure out a way to actually glue them somewhere else on your fairy door. So, there we go. And maybe I'll do that because for this class we will not be going outside and putting it, putting the fairy door outside. So that's another option if you don't want to display your fairy door outside. Berries live inside too. So you could display your fairy door inside, maybe in your room or in the kitchen or somewhere unexpected. Okay. Oh, and while these dry and those dry, let's go ahead and revisit our rock. 
So let's go to the instructions and see what it says about our rack. It says you can use the rack transfer directly on the bare rack or over a painted rack. Make sure the paint is completely dry before proceeding with this step. So here's our little transfer and it says welcome fairies. So Sparkletastic would put this rack near her fairy door um, to welcome her fairy friends. So let's try putting it on the unpainted rock. So we'll just go ahead and rinse out our brush. I'll make sure all these are closed. Okay, so it says to cut around the transfer design, trimming away any extra paper. So you'll need a pair of scissors for this. As you're cutting, you'll notice there's a clear protective sheet that is protecting your transfer. Um, so it all stays together until you're ready to use it. There you go. All right. Next, peel off the clear film and place the sticky side against your rack. So we'll place this down like that. And it it's just a little bit sticky. It's not like sticky like a sticker. So then using a wet paper towel, here's my paper towel. Lightly press the back of the transfer against the rack. So I'll get it wet and I'm pressing just lightly so the transfer or so the paper, the back paper of the transfer, you can see it getting wet. So that's dry. When it's dark like that, that means it's wet. And I'm kind of just squeezing so water comes off of the paper towel and onto the back of the transfer. And then it says peel up the edge to make sure that it is adhered. So let's peel it up together. Oh, it doesn't look like it's sticking yet. Yeah, we might need to put more water on. And just in case this is the first time you're using a transfer and it doesn't work, it's okay. You can always just paint your rack and then you can use like a permanent marker and you can write on your rack whatever you'd like to write. Like welcome fairies or you could draw a picture of a butterfly or something like that. It looks like, oh yeah, I think I need to try just a little bit more. Oh. Maybe I'll let it sit a little bit, see if it works, and it kind of felt like it was moving, so it might be working. Oh, here we go. Welcome, fairies. Perfect. Oh, no, it's a little bit wet, so once it dries, you can see it say Welcome Fairies. And, uh, okay, so we'll let that dry over to the side. Back to our mushrooms. So I'm going to use a little bit more paint on our little yellow mushroom. And we'll put some peach orange dots on it. And you can use either the bristle side of your brush to add the dots, or you could use the end of your brush. And I'll show you what that looks like. It's kind of fun to use your brush in different ways. So it creates perfect little circles. Cute. There we go. 
I'll wipe off my brush so I don't get paint from the handle on me. There we go. Okay, so now what? Oh, now let me close that up. All right, so use the glue provided to attach the wooden accents. Um, and then we can, we can put our mirror inside. And then we slide the door onto the hinges. Okay, so here's our glue. I'll put you guys aside here for a second. And before I put the door on, I do want to add my mirror. So the mirror is going to go on the inside of the door as a little surprise. I think that'll be fun. So you don't see the mirror right away when you open the door. But when you open it all the way, you will see it. So you just peel that off, stick it on, and you're good to go. Okay. So there's holes in this part of the door. You probably noticed that as you were taking it off. So just line up the holes onto the hinges and then move the little slat here. There we go. And we'll glue our decorations on. Um, there we go. So the glue kind of starts jumping out of the glue container really quickly, so just be aware of that. Um, there's a little bit of pressure built up in the glue. Okay, just smear it around. And as I mentioned earlier, this is weatherproof glue. So it being out in the elements will not make this um, pop off. It should stay on pretty darn well. There we go. So you can see there's one. And then our butterfly will put down here. Just put it on the body of the butterfly because that's what I'll be sticking onto the door. Like that. And then this little butterfly with sparkles and a gem, you can kind of move the wings around because it's got wire inside. So. Let's just take the stickiness off of here. And I think we'll put it right up on the decoration. Okay, and to do our, um, to make our little handle with our mushroom, you're going to want to cut off the actual stem of the mushroom. And you might have to cut through this plastic, or in this case, it's like a little thin piece of metal. We'll add some glue right here to where this screw is. And maybe a little bit around it. And we'll put our mushroom on it. There we go. Perfect. So you're also given a fun little flower like this. So you could uh, you could probably cut off this area and stick it to your door or you can just stick it into the ground if you're hanging your door outside. Um, so to that point, I think in the instructions it actually tells you how to display your door. So select a tree, position the fairy door onto the tree. This will help you decide where to place the nail or the screw. So once the nail, you'll need a little itty bitty nail or a little itty bitty screw to put into the tree. And then, and don't worry, it won't hurt the tree because it's such a small little nail or screw. Then you can hang from this hanger you can hang your fairy door onto the tree and that will help it from falling down or blowing away. So once you do that, then you can spread this gravel out making a little walkway up to your fairy door. 
And then you can place your little rack that says Welcome Fairies right up to make it a very welcoming introduction to Sparkletastic's Fairy Friends. Well, I hope you all enjoyed creating as much as I did, and I can't wait to see some of your painted fairy doors on our social media accounts. Thank you so much for crafting with us today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. So look for an email soon so you can watch the video again. And if you'd like to show us what you created, go ahead and ask an adult to post it on our Creativity for Kids Facebook group or tag Creativity for Kids on Instagram. Thanks again. See you next time.